Most of the time when you think of a disability, you think of a visible disability. Our next speaker is gonna talk to you guys about how she lives with an invisible disability. Please help me to welcome Sarah Skinner. Hi, I'm Sarah and I'm a sophomore at Fairmont High School. At Fairmont, I'm in the marching band and the pep band and I play the clarinet in both of those. I also play the oboe in the wind ensemble and I play the piano in my free time. I also have a best friend who's my neighbor, which is really awesome because I could just text her and have her come over whenever she wants to. And I have an older brother who's 19 and he's at college right now, which is really good because that means I get the bathroom to myself, so yay. And I also have a cat and a dog and they're both really awesome. And our cat's name is Sugar and our dog's name is Jasmine because she's a little princess. And I also have a congenital heart defect. Now I'll talk more about my heart defect in a little bit. But for right now, I'm gonna talk about my brother, Justin. As I said, he's 19 and he's in college right now. And Justin ha also has a congenital defect, but his is called spina bifida. And spina bifida is a congenital defect in which the spine during the formation of the fetus is formed outside of the body. And depending on what part of the spine is outside of the body determines what part of the body is damaged and paralyzed. And in my brother, it's about mid thighs down, but in other people, it could be from the waist down or even lower down. So it just depends on the person. But because of this, Justin uses either a wheelchair or forearm crutches to get around. And the reason why I mention this is because both of those items are very, very visible, sometimes too visible when he parks them in the middle of the living room. But you can look at Justin and say, yes, this child has some sort of disability. Now, when Justin was four, I was born and the whole world rejoiced. No, when I was born, my parents, they were very happy because first of all, I was a girl, cause you know, girls are better. And also they were happy because I was a perfectly normal little baby. I was happy, I was healthy, I needed no immediate medical attention. My brother needed a surgery less than three hours after he was born, and I needed no special medical attention now, until three days later. We were sitting at home on the couch. My head was in Justin's lap, and he was feeding me, and my face turned bright blue. I'm talking the blue behind the stars on the American flag blue, blue of violet from Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory, that shade of blue. That obviously terrified about my parents. So they called 911 and the ambulance came and rushed me to Kettering Medical Center. And at Kettering Medical Center, they decided that I was too young to be treated there. So then they sent me to Dayton Children's Medical Center. And at Dayton Children's Medical Center, they ran many tests, including EKGs, CAT scans, MRIs, all of those. And they noticed something was a little off on my EKG. So they sent me to Cincinnati Children's where they had a specialist, an electrocardiologist specialist, and they believed that my condition would need that. So once I got to Cincinnati Children's, they gave me another EKG and they discovered something was very, very off and they confirmed my diagnosis with Long QT Syndrome. Now Long QT Syndrome is a congenital heart defect in which my heart takes too long to recover from beating, which means the top half of my heart could beat twice before the bottom half of my heart beats once. And that's not good because that's called cardiac arrest. So here's a normal EKG, and you can see the QT interval, and that's how long it takes your heart to recover from beating. On my EKG, however, the QT interval is much, much longer, and that is not good. If I wasn't medicated, I would have a 50% chance of going into cardiac arrest about every day. So going back to, or because of this, I am heavily medicated. I am on two beta blockers, which most people who take beta blockers are grown men in their 50s or 60s with a heart disease, like high blood pressure or high cholesterol. And they only take one, and I take two, so I am heavily medicated. I also am not allowed to participate in anything that could elevate my heart rate, which means that I am not allowed to do sports, I am not allowed to drink caffeine, I'm not allowed to participate in anything that could elevate my heart rate. I really shouldn't even be in marching band. There are so many things that I cannot do because of my disability. 
Now going back to Justin. He was an ambassador for Dayton Children's Medical Center about four years ago. And throughout that experience, my, me and my family met many amazing people. We had an awesome time. It was a lot of fun. We even met Uncle Cracker, so that was really cool. But I learned something throughout that experience. I learned that people will pay more attention and focus more on the patients with acute illnesses than they will on patients with chronic illnesses. Even more specific, they will focus more on patients with acute and visible illnesses than they will patients with, a, with chronic and invisible illnesses. I believe that all disabilities should be treated as equal. No disability is worse than another. They are all awful. Nobody should have to go through anything like that. If you have an acute illness, or if someone has an acute illness and they have been cured of it, they can go and they can live their life as if nothing happened. They can go and they can ride the diamond back. But people like me and people like my brother, we are stuck fighting this disability our entire lives. There is no winning our battle. We got an opportunity to go to Maui with our grandparents, and instead of the first thing coming to my mind being, oh my gosh, I get to go to Maui, how exciting is this? The first thing that came to my mind was, how am I going to take my medicine across an entire continent and across half the Pacific Ocean? How am I going to take my medicine when I'm in four different time zones? How will Justin get his wheelchair and other medical supplies on and off of the plane? So many things that me and my family think of that most people would just completely disregard. If you look to your left and you look to your right, any person in this room could have an invisible disability and you would have no idea. Thank you. <laughs>